All right, we made it. Welcome to the final episode. I hope you're excited as I am because, one, the full transcription is now public, so go check it out on Freak of the Art 73, my other channel. But two, this is probably my favorite section of Crown's entire show. Maybe a tie with the ballad. The ballad is absolutely beautiful, but, but this is definitely my favorite part um, besides the ballad of the show. Just absolutely fantastic writing and absolutely fantastic playing, and I just love it. So, we're going to jump right into this, and at the end, I've decided at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you the, uh, the edits of the entire transcription as a whole, rather than making it a separate episode, because there's really not much edits to do, but I do want to show you those edits. And also, as I've said in previous episodes, you will get um, at least two, probably more than two, bonus episodes with bonus material, such as um, how I put together the audio file. Uh, I think you'll find if you go listen to the transcription, you'll get a, a sort of really cool stereo effect. At least I'm hoping it'll be a really cool stereo effect. Um, that's my goal. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the process as I do that. And there's going to be a, um, a time lapse of the full transcription process. You'll get to see it. Um, so hopefully I'll get to, um, to have all of that stuff done by the end of the month and you'll get to see it all and enjoy it all. And I'm really excited for that. So Let's go ahead and get started. We will be in 3-4 for the majority of this development section of this closer. And we are not being in quarter note equals 40 any longer. This is more like quarter note equals 180. So we will go ahead and reflect that. And let's see. Probably the first one, two, three, four, five, six measures is probably pit stuff. And I know that one, two, three, four, five, six. If we're starting in measure seven, I know that the baritone part comes in on beats two. And Here, we're gonna go ahead and, and put this in B flat major while I'm thinking about it. Same lines, okay. And actually, I'm pretty sure that this isn't in baritone one. And actually, it, well, it, I guess it could be in baritone one, um, but I know that in the future, oh, we're out of uh, measures, let's add measures. But I know that in the future, um, the baritone one is going to have a 16th note pattern, so I don't know. I guess, I guess I'll go ahead and give them this part for now. Why not? Cool. Just checking to make sure that was the length and quality um, that I wanted to hear before I kept going on. Okay, cool. Okay, so now we know... Uh, The lead baritone part starts an octave below where it ends. So knowing how the scale works, I would deduce that it starts as a triplet figure and then becomes a 16th note figure. The majority of this transcription probably doesn't have much explaining to do. I've explained pretty much everything that you need to know in the previous episodes. I'm kind of taking the same exact approach uh, once again, and there are a couple of things as uh, as I continue that I will bring up, but this should be pretty straightforward at this point if you've been watching the episodes. All right. Gosh, I'm not entirely sure how this voicing is, so we're going to try something and test it out. Um, we could just listen a whole bunch of times and potentially drive ourselves crazy trying to pick out which specific instrument plays what, but I have a theory as to what it actually is, so I'm just going to try it. I'm pretty sure we've got a concert B-flat here, but since it's not already represented in the trumpets, it would be represented in the next voice, which would be the horn one. Uh, let's see. And that B-flat might not be there, huh? I don't know. I like the way it sounds. I don't know if it's in there. But to be honest, I might like it enough to keep it whether it's in there or not. All right. 
We're going to go ahead and write the first trumpet part all the way through because we know what this sounds like, and then we'll see if we can fill in the harmonies. Um, uh, what do we? What else do we know chord wise that we can fill in? We know the second trumpet part. Could hear the trumpet. Well, actually, I, well, I know where the second trumpet part starts, and what we were gonna try the the um, the parallelism theory. So let's go ahead and try that out. Um, the second trumpet part starts chromatically. Oh, a minor third below on an F. Nope. I don't think that's right. I think it's diatonic. Um, except for that D flat. Try that. Well, cool. So I was incorrect in the parallel uh, chord structure, but it at least got us close enough to to be able to make that happen. Okay, so then we have da 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 dum da da dum da dum da dum da dum da dum. All right. Okay, what else? Do, what else do we know? Uh, we know what the tuba has, don't we? I knew before. I'm 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 blanking on it right now. Dee 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 dee. Yeah. Yeah, we do know what it has, and if I'm not mistaken, it starts on a B flat. Um, I'm gonna put these in this general proximity. And if it starts on a B flat, then I have reason to believe that the horn one also starts on a B flat. So we've got a sort of tetrachord thing going on, which would be cool. Well, sounds like what I want, so we're going to leave it like that. And I'm pretty sure those are all the chord tones that are represented in this. Two measure section, so I'm going to. Assume that that part is doubled on horn. Then we'll double it as so. which would once again put the baritone three part, unison and octaves with the tuba part. We'll see how that sounds. Okay. Cool, anyway. Now we've got, And we'll double that at the octave. I'm assuming that's what we want. Okay. And um, of course we know that the low brass comes in on the next beat. And that's what I think they sound like. Let's test it out. Okay, I think that's going to be, <coughs> excuse me, I think that's going to be what we want it to look like for our intents and purposes. Okay. It's a piano, and we're gonna have that day crescendo, and then the crescendo will obviously be bigger than the day crescendo because it's crescendoing up to mezzo forte. Okay, cool. So now we need to fill in these two measures. Um, and then we'll 
continue with the rest of this. This should be pretty easy throughout the rest of the uh, through the ending. I think maybe for our purposes we're going to double this part on the horn and double this part on the trumpet. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay. I think that's going to work for my own purposes. Um, Dynamic-wise, we're going to make this a mezzo piano. And of course, we'll have it crescendo. So we'll go ahead and write it in now. This next part that's coming up sounds extremely crazy because it is extremely crazy, <laughs> but it's not there. It's not that difficult at all to uh, to pick out in the context of a transcription series because the runs that are taking place in the first trumpet and lead baritone are pretty much entirely stepwise. So I'm going to show you right now what it looks like. And we're having this doubled in... Actually, we're going to go ahead and put the slurs on before we double this in. That way we don't have to put slurs in twice. Double it here in the lead baritone by the octave. So again, reiterating, as you can see, um, this is all stepwise. And so... Um, for crazy runs like this, if you know where it starts and you know where it ends in any any particular phrase, like for example, I knew that this started on a concert B flat, ended on a F, you know, and I knew the general contour of the line. I don't necessarily have to know what each individual note is and pick them out if I know that it's all stepwise and I know where it turns and, and whatnot. Same thing here from the F all the way over here to this A. You know, it was like, I didn't necessarily need to know each individual note. I just needed to know, you know, how long it goes down stepwise, how long it goes up stepwise. It went down for a beat, up for a beat, you know, and, and et cetera, et cetera. And I could fill it in very easily that way without having to try to pick out every single individual note that takes place in all of those 16th note runs. So just something to think about. Let's listen to this. And there it is, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and fill in everything underneath it. Okay, cool. What I'm doing right now is I'm not entirely sure um, how this is voiced, but I'm voicing it based off of um, literally just predictions on my own part based off of just the general texture that I hear that happens here um, and this is something that is just totally like I can't really explain it it just comes from experience um, I hear a certain uh, sonority implied by what the brass is playing and so I'm just creating a texture that I think would emulate that If, there, if I come up with a better way to explain it or how to show you guys how to do it, I will. Um, I can't hear what the part actually is, but I think to, to thicken out the texture that we're looking for, this is going to be the right idea. I might be able to find some luck going back and fixing this. But in this particular case, um, neither of the head cams is showing me what I need, and listening to the professional recording isn't showing me what I need either. It's just kind of buried in the texture for me. I can't pick it out. So um, we'll see how this sounds. And, and if it sounds good for me, we'll leave it where it is.
Okay, um, I think that'll do pretty well. I have a couple of things to change. That might be a, an appropriate doubling at the octave, of course. Okay, that's gonna do it. Um, that's gonna do it for me at this point. If there's anything I can do to change it, I will. But I think that sounds that sounds like the way that I want to sound. So, okay, so we've got pick up sixteenth notes. And they also take place in the uh, lead baritone down the octave, of course. Okay. Cool. So this uh, this rest part should be pretty easy to fill out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that, and then we'll see what it sounds like. Um, starting with the tuba. And then we'll go with the um, high brass and then probably doubling it in the low brass and then we'll put the mellophone in part last mellophone part in last so we'll go ahead and do that and see what it sounds like um so the reason why i am notating this part the part that you see in the upper trumpets the way i'm notating it is because i wanted there to be more note than space and um the the way that I usually do it wasn't cutting it for me um, the the legato staccato marking so I decided to notate it manually myself to put an eighth note of rest in between each note to have separation I'm pretty sure that that's not how it's written um, and actually to be honest I'm not entirely sure that that's not how it's written because that might have been exactly how Michael Clash or the brass staff wanted it to be articulated so they might have actually specifically done it this way but um. It's likely that it wasn't done this way, that they just asked for the horn line to separate um, each one of those notes for clarity's sake. So that's as much of a possibility as it is that they actually wrote it that way. But um, once again, I want it to sound the way that I want it to sound from a MIDI playback. And so I'm going to have it, I'm going to write it in such a way in the MIDI playback that it'll play what I actually want it to play if it were in real life. Um, okay, let's see how this sounds. Okay, I think that's going to work. Same thing, not much to show here because I'm doing the same thing I've always done, writing in what I know um, from the top and the bottom lines, putting in moving lines, and then um, listening to double check myself. So I'll just go ahead and, and uh, cut through this and show you what it looks like when I'm done. It is important to note what I'm doing here. I don't think that there is any sort of block chord structure going on here um, and these whole notes. I'm pretty sure they're unison in octaves with this line taking place in the trumpet one and I have a doubled in the trumpet two for balance reasons as well um, and then also taking place in the lead baritone part down the octave there's a mellophone line that comes in after here that I'll, that I'll put in soon um, and then the only exception to the octave is 
a fifth in the euphonium part. And the part is something like this. That might actually be a half note, I don't know, but I think that a quarter note is going to sound appropriate in the context of this particular transcription. Um, with the exception of maybe the first or the last time we have this happen, I will make it a half note. And that's not based off of what I hear, that's based off of just my own intuition, what I think would sound cool. And actually, I'm going to do some doubling as well to bring it out. This is seriously just like for the sake of me wanting this part to be heard. If it sounds good, then I'll keep it. Oh, I forgot that crescendo. I guess it'll do. Um, I want to <laughs> make this ever so slightly slower than than this. So we'll drop it down five clicks once it gets there. Um, we forgot to put this crescendo in, so we'll do that now. Then all we have is the coda, and we'll be done with the entire transcription, and we'll go back and we'll do um, some edits throughout the entire transcription, and then we will call it a day with this episode. Yeah, I think that's going to do it. Awesome. All right. So there was something small I wanted to change. I wanted to put another retard here. Retard. Um, cool. But other than that, I think we are finished with the draft of this transcription. So we'll go back and, and we will um, do some quick edits and then we'll call it an episode. All right, let's put the finishing touches on now, shall we? The very first thing I want to do is that from the very first note, I would like to lengthen these. I can barely hear the attack of these notes. So now I can hear the attack of these notes. And we're going to accent them. Undo. For reasons that you will um, understand if you go and look at my full transcription. <coughs> Excuse me. I would like to add the... Um, the long tone that happens before this, the concert G. We want to add crescendos at the end of, come on, at the end of this phrase. I would like to put a crescendo at the end of this one as well. We're going to add a tuba coming in, whoops, tuba coming in on those last two beats. And I think we're going to put pit cues here because it's such a long rest. We're going to double this part down here because that's what actually happens in the real thing. And this is also an appropriate place to put uh, to put cues. <laughs> We're going to make this retardando happen on beat two. And we are actually going to use 
Clone Legal 60 after all. We're going to put a retardando on the last two beats of this whole note. Because this part is doubled, we're going to bring it down one dynamic level for balance reasons. And we're going to crescendo each of these bars, so it's worth reiterating the dynamic marking <coughs> Excuse me, each time that we have it do the riff again. Cool. So I think that we're done here. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this transcription series as much as I did. Um, it's been a lot of fun putting this stuff together. Like I said before, you're going to see some bonuses, some bonus material after this episode. They should come out in a few days, so take a look at that. Also take a look at the full transcription on my Freak of the Arts channel. Feel free to subscribe to both Freak of the Arts and MS Grant Music on YouTube. I'll be posting some fun stuff, particularly uh, more actively on MS Grant Music than I will be on Freak of the Arts lately. But if I have another transcription of any sort, you'll see it on Freak of the Arts. And some of the stuff will happen on that other channel as well. So it's a good idea to go ahead and subscribe to both. Um, I have a ton of of previous transcriptions if you are not familiar with my work. So go check them all, all out at Freak of the Art 73. There's a playlist that says My DCI Hornline Transcriptions right on that channel. You can watch that. Um, please feel free to go uh, follow me on Facebook. You can also find me on Instagram and you can also find me on Twitter if you want to. All of those are uh, backslash MS Grant Music. So, Go find those, check those out. Is there anything else I'm missing? Um, you can check out my website at msgrantmusic.org. You can also check out my blog at uh, msgrantmusic.blogspot.com, I believe. And if that's erroneous, then I'll, I'll put the, uh, the correct information up on this video. Um, go check out some of the other videos that I've done if you would like to. Um, but if you don't, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I do. Uh, if you have any questions, please, please, please leave the question in the comments section, and I will answer it to the best of my ability. Um, other than that, this has been fun. <laughs>